Hello, my name is Raquel, and order to buy or sell, you have to have the money of the beast, on your mind, or in your hands, one of those words that's not translated correctly. And I'm getting some work done on the Wikipedia. It looks like pretty soon we're going to get 666's money up there on the number of the beast page. Uh, there we go, okay. Karagma. It's one of these mistranslated words. And the, no one buys or sells without the money of the beast on your mind, or in your hand. And there's the word karagma. And this is the unabridged Greek-English lexicon by Liddell and Scott. And you can see that it means the impress on the coin. And then the second definition is stamp money coin. And Antipater, Thessalonius, and Plutarch lived about the time the Book of Revelations was written, which was like 66 AD, just before the Jews revolted against Rome. Eliminating money. And... Pol Pot, and uh, they slandered him. This guy, uh, well, there's Muammar Gaddafi, and uh, he wrote the Green Book and talked about eliminating money. We also have, uh, well, I'm trying to find that one by Pol Pot. Well, well, that's not in here, but he did believe in eliminating money, and they slandered him, made him look like he was really bad, and he, just as they were starting to get the country back together again, the Vietnamese invaded. They had newspaper men there and uh, reporting only like three of them and uh, that was during the invasion. After that they got out of there. I'm going to turn this down a little bit. So there's just been a lot of bad scary news. You know the tornadoes and over there in the Midwest and the floods in the Midwest and the, the fires in the mountains here. Plus, like China, the northern part of China is drying up and they don't have enough water for their cities, so they're going to build like an 800-mile canal through all these other rivers. They just, uh, population explosion. They're saying these countries around Egypt, they're all dependent on that Nile for water, and some of the populations in those countries around there are going to increase like by 30 million by 2020. So uh, they're just, and then the Chinese are buying vacant land in Egypt to grow food to feed themselves. It's just like uh, this population is really the biggest problem, and it's in the worst places too, like Africa. There was a story in the New York Times about this suburb of Johannesburg in South Africa where these two, they had two squatter camps separated by a big field and some mud and stuff. And so there were some, I think they were Nigerians or somebody else in those communities that the South Africans didn't like very much. So um, they accused one of these Nigerians of doing something and this lynch mob got together and they came across this field through a path that some little kid led them through because the little kid knew who the guy was. It, did this alleged crime, he was one of these Nigerians or something. So they uh, followed him over to the other camp and and um, just randomly they saw this guy talking on the phone and he was from Nigeria and uh, he tried to lie his way out of it but they just started beating him and they beat him up and this is all on video cameras and uh, it was like on the New York Times, it's going to be in the New York Times Magazine Sunday, this story about this innocent man murdered by a mob and uh, it's just they show pictures of this shanty town where these people live and they're all just I've seen some other horrible videos like that on the internet too like in Africa and then they had one in Mexico it's some narco terrorist website it's in Spanish and they showed them they hung some woman by a bridge and um, and then they uh, took pictures of it and then they the newspapers did and then they like skinned people with machetes and they castrated this guy alive he was hung upside down and this guy gets a machete and he grabs him and just hacks his wiener off and like you can see the guy going into shock and after that he didn't move at all he was hardly moving I mean I don't think he was moving at all but they started cutting his arms off and and these guys were wearing masks with great big M14s or AKs on their shoulders. And they were all wearing masks and black. 
and uh, they were like butchering this guy alive and they like take pictures of them and cut their heads off and they even skin their heads down there and uh, so there's just um, a lot of stuff like that and then like these blacks were riding on the east coast and um, they always call them youths the youths were restless and um, there was a whole bunch of different cities where this happened just over Labor Day so it's gonna be a long hot summer with the fires here and uh, crazy black people down there and and um, my sister, my older sister, sent me this email. I was telling her how bad things are down here with the economy and everything, and how I can't sell any vacant land. And uh, one guy, um, a real estate agent I talked to, he uh, had a vacant lot for $5,000 that I used to sell for 23, just like that. But it's been on the market for like 300 days, and nobody's bought it for $5,000. So you know it's really bad, and uh, I don't think I'll be able to afford paying property tax on these anymore. I was saying to my friend today, I could have put a swimming pool in for the amount of money I paid in property taxes last May. And I just don't think I can go through that anymore. But uh, yeah, the world population is really the problem in facing the world, and uh, you can see how it just exponentially grew. And uh, it was two billion in 1946, and uh, I think they're saying it's going to get up to seven billion. Oh, what was that? 2020, maybe. It's not going to be too long. And this is the way the United States population is going at the rate of our immigration. This red line is immigration. If we didn't allow all these immigrants in our population would be like that or and then we could probably decline some because the Hispanic popular fertility rate is a lot higher than the white his, the fertility rate so people that were born in 1946 can really see a big change in the world and how things have changed so much it's just gotten so ridiculous and uh, there was a good video on this dieoff.org website and um, he's talking, dieoff is from the peak oil and like we're running out of oil there was a UK uh, study, a commission by some of the people in parliament there and they were concluded, they were trying to figure out what to do if oil reaches like two hundred dollars a barrel and at the, the highest it's been so far is like a hundred twenty five but if it goes up to $200 a barrel, it's just going to make it even worse than it is already. And Alan Greenspan was on the news the other day, and he was saying that, uh, well, just today he was on the news, and, and he was saying that the uh, we need to raise taxes on the rich. He said something like he's never seen the economy this bad or something. He just, uh, we're in really bad shape with his debt. and. Uh, the amount of money we owe, and if we don't get this debt ceiling raised, and and uh, then the bonds will go bad, and it's just a crazy funny money nightmare, which is uh, why we need to basically eliminate money. There's so many jobs that are unnecessary in this world. You know, you've got the bankers, bookkeepers, accountants, sales and sales clerks, uh, insurance companies, and and all these people that are pushing papers and not really producing anything. So, like, you could streamline the economy. There's only one way I can see that the world's going to be saved is if we eliminate money because uh, we can put all those people back to work. That's what Pol Pot did in Cambodia. He, the lie is that he forced these people to leave the cities, and he did do that, but those people weren't really producing anything, and they had a lot of prostitutes, and now they have a whole lot more prostitutes over there, and it's really bad child prostitutes and stuff like that. But... Um, Pol Pot, he had to get these people back um, out in the fields because after the United States bombed Cambodia and they put craters everywhere and damaged water irrigation dikes and things like that, so they had to clear the cities out to get people to work and fix the dams and everything because people were starving. You know, that's kind of the uh, thing, uh, that Dead Kennedy song, and, uh, which is like propaganda. 
but uh, you know the people were dying because um, they had a civil war there, and the United one of the things that they indicted Nixon for was bombing Cambodia illegally. So anyway, America has bad karma from all these wars, and uh, especially World War II. If world, the world would be in a much better pl time, place if uh, Hitler had his way, because they never would have had all these uh, Muslims in there. They would have moved them. That's what Hitler's plan was, was to move the Jews to Madagascar. And the Jews were a lot different back then in the 30s. They wore the black caftans and they were very distinguishable. And so Hitler, when he first saw them in Vienna, he thought, you know, who are these people? And, and you know, what are they doing here? Are they German or are they something else? And of course, they spoke Yiddish. They didn't even speak German. So um, he was just wondering, what are they doing in our country? And I guess he found a lot of them studying their Talmud. And there's some things in that Talmud that are just, you know, it's, it's their law, it's their life. And uh, very few people talk about it, but like, if you look at the uh, people that run Hollywood, most of those people are Jews. And there was a good article, a good book by, uh, oh, called uh, Inventing Hollywood, I think. But it was written by a Jew, and they admit that, you know, all the stuff they put on there is... Uh, I mean, like, I'd like to see a movie of a messiah coming back and rebuking all these religious Christian hypocrites and, and rebuking the Jews, you know, that's, I mean, what they're doing over there with those huge concentration camps in Gaza. It's the world's most densely populated place. And they're, they have a wall around there. You know, we celebrated the East Berlin Wall going down. But uh, there we get back to the population, and it's like, Israel's biggest problem now is these Arabs. The populations just keep growing over there. And uh, so, well, the Jews have refugees, other, other refugees, other places, but, you know, they've got the atomic bomb, and, uh, and like, we went into Afghanistan to keep the opium going, and the CIA makes profit off that. There's, like, when we lost the Vietnam War and the Golden Triangle, that there was a that's where they're producing the heroin from, but then they uh, moved it to Afghanistan after that. And then, as soon as the Taliban eradicated all the opium, the United States invaded. So there's that's my theory of what's going on there. And the, the whole 9/11 thing was was a, a, a Pearl Harbor type incident, a, flat, a false flag in order to get the United States involved in the Iraq war and Saddam Hussein didn't have anything to do with it. He was uh, Israel's public enemy number one and he had a whole squadron of uh, infantry men that, that was planning on invading. That was their whole purpose. Whether that's, I mean, but like the whole problem would be uh, over this oil. They have to steal the oil because they know it's running out. But like I said earlier, my sister sent me this video and it was uh, Representative Bartlett. <clears throat> I don't remember his first name, but he's the Republican from Maryland. And he's on this uh, peak oil commission in the United States here. And I didn't know that until my sister sent that to me. I thought that the UK was the only one that was aware of the problem that it's trying to do something about. And like Prince Charles, I think he's kind of aware of it. He, he advocates organic uh, farming. And that's uh, what they do in this video my sister sent me. It's, it's on my Facebook page. I have the uh, video there, and there's like three parts to it. But they go to this farm in Tennessee, and they have like solar collectors, and, and they cut their own wood. And you know, it's a really nice scenery and situation there, nice rolling hills. And they had a picture of the sunset on there. but. Uh, I really think that the, they're going to pull the rug out from under us. Another solution would be to spread smallpox, and and then you know a certain amount of people would have the uh, vaccination. But if like smallpox spreads, the, you know you've got to get out of the city. That's what a lot of people did. Well, that was the bubonic plague and stuff like that. And when those kind of things uh, happen, you're going to have to bug out, you know, and go up in the mountains. And so you need to have like a stash of food up there. Like the best thing that you can have is like corn and soybeans. 
If you're in the Midwest, you can, uh, you'll be pretty safe. I don't know how long that stuff lasts in those silos, but it, you'd have to start planting some and harvesting it. It's a very nutritious, you mix the, like, uh, two parts of corn with uh, one part of soybeans, and I grind them separately and put them in a lot, pot with a little salt. But the problem is you have to have some vitamin C. So, I mean, like, I don't know how bad things are going to get, but I think all the rich people, they'll fly off in their jets and sail away in their lots to places like uh, yachts, I meant, to, to their land, their acres in Bolivia, or they, they live in Australia or New Zealand. And, like, if I finished my nursing degree, I'd probably be able to immigrate there, but I never did. I got caught up in the stupid real estate and... And I quit my uh, school there, and uh, here I am, you know, with, because of this economy, you just can't sell anything. So it looks like I'll just easy come, easy go, and try to uh, maintain, but like, oh, there's so many people unemployed, it, like, they lie about how many people are, and I just can see that they were talking about it today, that they only made like 56,000 jobs in the month of May, and uh, it, it needs to be 250,000 in order to, uh, so the unemployment rate went up to 9.1 today, and that sent the stock market down. It was down 222 points Thursday, and uh, I had a chart here, uh, I mean a graph that shows how the uh, dollar is declining. I'm, I think I might have shown that yesterday, but I'll just show you a few pictures. I don't have too much more time. These guys are chewing cat, Q-A-T, and this is in Yemen. It says here, deal collapses for a transfer of power in Yemen. And here we have this, uh, I mean, the whole Middle East is like exploding, and I think we're losing all our despot dictators over there that are pro-Israel and pro-America, uh, so like that Israel is really in a bad situation. These people that say, if you don't bless Israel, God will not bless you. I mean, those are the kind of hypocrites that exist in this world. I mean, these, this it's just, you know, this ridiculous religion. They don't really understand that Jesus Christ is the logos or logic of God, and that, that what isn't logical is like, of the devil, and the devil is a slanderer who um, falsely accuses. So, like anybody who uh, says, "Well, Adolf Hitler and Pol Pot were slandered," and um, it's like you know that most of these religions, they, I mean, they don't under, I mean, they don't respect the earth. And um, like Karl Marx said something about you know the god of the Jews is money. And if you go to my website, you can find a whole bunch of more quotes about pe by people who believe in eliminating money. So at the, the Plato's Republic, they uh, eliminated, well, the, the guardians that ran the place, they, didn't, they weren't allowed to touch gold and silver in uh, Plato's Republic. But, uh, and Plato said that democracy is, democracy is mob rule, and it's one level above tyranny because, uh, uh, well, you know, there's profit on people, and so that's why they don't encourage people to um, control themselves. And some of these dumb Christian people don't believe in giving away birth control pills to these places that really need it in uh, the world today. And it's just like um, the Mexican population is exploding, too. It's like... Uh, I just don't see much of a future for this country and uh, the way things are going. It's just certainly much different than when I was growing up, but it was starting to get kind of bad. I remember I was working on the railroad up in uh, Nebraska when I was about 23, and uh, they paid us uh, six, I start off I think like six fifty an hour maybe, I don't remember, but when I got like seven dollars an hour I thought I was making so much money. And I saved up a bunch and was living in my blue Volkswagen van, 1970. 
and uh, saved up about maybe twelve thousand dollars and like it only cost me back then like four thousand dollars a year to live like in the winter I'd go down to uh, Texas or to Tucson I came down here January 1st uh, 1980 and ended up stuck here and uh, just love to get out and go to I don't know I'd like to check out Oregon hopefully I can get my business taken care of and go up there and scope out the the lay you know the climate and the valleys and the density and you know the crime statistics and whether you can grow uh, food there I know they grow cranberries in one area I was looking at in the south uh, west part of Oregon I I mean Portland really looks like it's exploded I I was there back like in seventy you know, like yes yeah, seventy oh wait a minute. I'm not the hell. <laughs> Let me think. When was I up there? It was like it was before '80. Yeah, so I must have been '70 something. But uh, it was a really nice community. I lived along the Willamette River, and they had this uh, grain mill down along there. And all these rats would come out at night, eating all those oats and stuff that the railroad cars uh, dropped in there. They were, I think they were making dog food there. It was a dog food factory. Or something like that, but and then they had beavers in the Willamette River. But uh, I just think this country, it's like, um, I mean, it's, there, it shouldn't, you shouldn't have to work that hard. I mean, modern machinery was, was supposed to make life easier for us, but uh, you know, like there are just so many unnecessary jobs that uh, that don't need to even really be done. It, like there's only two million people that farm vegetables and then there's another two million that raise cattle and stuff like that in the meat industry but meat eating isn't really a practical thing to do I think the Mormons don't believe that you should uh, I mean meat is a luxury I mean if in time of times of famine or like um, if you're surviving you, you could eat meat but you waste all that refrigeration and uh, so, like, <laughs> there was this thing in that video my sister sent me that said that it would be so easy to, like, really disrupt this country. And that's what's going on in Yemen now. The whole economy and everything's just shattered. But, like, if a terrorist blew up certain power stations, like uh, junctions, I guess, or whatever, but it would, like, cause a chain reaction of, of power grids going down. So... I mean, maybe that's going to happen this summer. It's been really hot down here. And, um, you know, it's like so hot down here in Tucson that after 10 o'clock, you know, you've really got to be strong to stay out there, eat a lot of potassium, and uh, and then you can withstand the heat. But um, we're going to have a long, hot summer. I mean, the fires are already burning in like four or five places down here. They they don't, um, a lot of times these illegal aliens start these fires. They have campfires and the campfires get out of hand. And uh, so be careful with your campfires and smokers out there, which is a really bad habit. And it's all because of money, you know, they make profit off these cigarettes. It probably cost them like a penny to make a pack of cigarettes and they charge you. It cost me $6.66 for a pack of cigarettes over at uh, Circle K. They have like 50 cents off on the kind I get. And uh, I think it's like, every time I get a pack, I smile. I say, oh, that's good. They're still 666. And uh, I asked her for my receipt so I could take a picture of it and put it up on my photographs. And uh, anyway, there's uh, a lot of crazy things going on in this world. And a miracle could only, can only happen if a bunch of wise people wake up and and realize that this is ridiculous. You know, they should all be try t taking LSD and they could see through this phony, crazy, stupid game with this funny money. And then they'd want to make a world better. I mean, that's the whole purpose in life is to make a, a better world for your children to survive in. Anyway, my name is Raquel. In order to buy or sell, you have to have the money of the beast on your mind in your hand. Bye.